It's June the 6th, 1934. It's Derby Day, and I'm in Brighton because there's been a murder. At the beginning of the summer of 1934, a trunk was deposited at the luggage office of Brighton Railway Station. Two weeks later, owing to the horrible smell emanating from it, it was forced open to reveal the headless, armless torso of a young woman. Her legs and feet were found in another suitcase at King's Cross in London. No one knew who she was. The case was baffling the police. And then... One month later, something even more peculiar happened. A painter working on a house in Kemp Street, Brighton, smelt something foul emanating from one of the apartments. He couldn't put his finger on it, but it didn't seem natural, so he went straight to the police. For reasons unknown to themselves, the police kept the house under surveillance for 48 hours. And then, when nothing happened, they forced their way into an apartment at 52 Kemp Street and discovered the stench-making object at the foot of the bed. It was a black leather trunk. Immediately, the implications came to mind. It was removed and taken to Bartholomew's HQ, and Bernard Spilsbury was once again sent for. I'm walking down Kemp Street now. They do say that they've renumbered the house numbers here. They're running from 34, early 30s, going upwards on my left-hand side here, on the east side, 39, 40. It's a very quiet street. Terraced houses. And although they say they have been renumbered, there's no... 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, and the current 52. The black leather trunk was opened at Brighton Police Station in Bartholomew Square, just under the town hall. There was no doubt that this was going to be the breakthrough the case needed. The head and hands were vital to the identification of the murdered victim. Dental records or fingerprints would certainly help. But the police were to be totally surprised, for when they opened the trunk from Kemp Street, they discovered not the head and hands as they were expecting, but the complete, lifeless body of a totally different woman, dressed, folded in the fetal position, and with her head bashed in. Naturally, the police were anxious to contact the tenant of this apartment in Kemp Street, one Tony Mancini, and an all-points bulletin was sent out. On the 18th of July, Mancini was picked up on the outskirts of London and brought back to Brighton. Tony Mancini was a small-time crook, known by a number of aliases, including Antoni Pirelli, Luigi Mancini, Hyman Gold and Jack Natire. He was 26, 5 foot 10, had a sallow complexion and a cast in one eye. Although he looked Italian, he was really English and his true name was Cecil Lewis England. Now, the owner of the house admits to having seen Mancini with another man bringing in the big black trunk and he was going to get his wife to question Mancini about it. But, of course, Mancini fled to London. Another curious fact had been that Mancini had also been questioned the previous month in the search for the identity of the trunk murder number one. During the appeal for missing persons the previous month, the name Violet Kay, a 42-year-old prostitute, came up as reported missing. Tony Mancini was associated with her, in fact, living off her immoral earnings at her apartment at 44 Park Crescent in Brighton. He'd already been questioned by the police as a matter of routine. 
and said quite simply that she'd gone to Paris to work the music halls. The police investigated no further as Violet Kay, at 42, was too old for the profile of the poor unfortunate wretch in the original trunk murder. It was also proved that Tony Mancini could not have been able to deposit both trunks, one at Brighton and one at King's Cross. He was dismissed. And after this first questioning, Mancini had fled to London. So who was the body in the black leather trunk then, at Mancini's lodgings? Well, I'm actually sitting on the steps of 44 Park Crescent. It's a, a, a Crescent Street with a, a row of terraced houses, what look like Georgian houses, I think. I'm not terribly good at uh, architecture of the period. A quiet street just north of the level. Uh, it leads straight on, in fact, from the level. And it's at 44 Park Street. This was the, the residence of Violet K. Mancini denied killing Violet K. According to him, he returned to the flat at 44 Park Crescent and found her already dead. Her head had been smashed in with a hammer. He said he couldn't go to the police because of what he was he would never be believed. So he panicked and he bought a trunk and placed the body inside. Then, with the use of a wheelbarrow, which he rented from another man, he took the trunk back to the old flat at Kemp Street. He left it at the foot of the bed and fled for London. It is a very uh, upmarket sort of place, and uh, if she was earning illicit earnings as a prostitute here, she was certainly doing very well for herself. Immediately in front of me is a church, which is on the road opposite to me. There's a huge um, Courage pub, the Race Hill pub, run by the brewery of um, Courage. According to this map that I have here, it's an 1880 map of Brighton, and clearly marked is Park Crescent, and clearly I'm in the right place. And number 44 I am sat in front of. Now, interestingly, I have seen on two different websites, they say that 44 Park Crescent has been demolished. But these houses have definitely not been demolished. They've been here for a good hundred years, if not 150 years. It is probable that Mancini placed the body of Violet Kay into the trunk and took her, with the help of a wheelbarrow, out through the back gardens of the Crescent, so not to be observed from the road, and then onto an area called The Level. From there he would have gone to Trafalgar Street and onwards to Kemp Street, a journey of only 15 minutes. The first trunk murder has never been solved, and there is nothing to link Tony Mancini with it, and it's unlikely that he had any involvement. He was, however, charged with the murder of Violet Kay. But incredibly, when he came to court, and thanks mainly to his defendant counsel, Norman Burkett, the jury found him not guilty, and the judge had no choice but to tell him that he was dismissed. There were never any more suspects for either murder. They remained a mystery for many years. To this day, we do not know who the woman is of her mid-twenties who was so callously hacked to pieces and deposited in the luggage offices of Brighton and King's Cross. Her head and arms have never been found. But on the 28th of November in 1976, the News of the World, a newspaper, carried the sinister and macabre headline, I've Got Away With Murder. Forty years after the crime, Tony Mancini resurfaced and confessed to reporter Alan Hart exactly how and why he had killed his lover, Violet Kay.